Cellulitis is a bacterial infection of the skin, which occurs deeper down in the layers of the skin, and if left untreated, can have potentially quite severe complications. When it happens to you, you, you will understand where I am coming from. My toes were like sausages. Ellen has lived with lymphedema all her life. I have a cellulitis infection in my hand. I thought it started around about here, but now we're getting this big red patch here that's really starting to track down my hand. It starts by being quite violently red, and then it will spread over my arm and up into my neck. When you've got an infection, you just feel so tired. You get shivery and uh, shaky, everything hurts, your muscles are tense. And the other thing that I tend to get as well, it's really weird, is I get tinnitus. Preventing repeat infections is an important part of self-management for people living with lymphedema. I didn't know what it was and, you know, it obviously turns sepsemia as well, which is blood poisoning and stuff like that, so that's what happened to me. The first time it happened, I was taking some shuttering down, concrete shuttering. It sprung and slapped my ankle, the timber did. Didn't think nothing of it. Then the next day then, it was really red, sore, and my wife said, oh, it's just probably a hangover. But it was this kicking in, and well, within about four hours then, she had to get me into hospital, went up my leg, traced up my leg. As soon as I'd started to feel a little bit better because I was self-employed, I had to go back to work, you know, so I was basically fighting a losing battle and the last time it happened to me, I come round in the amputation ward and they were going to take my leg. So that's quite a typical part and it dampens down and then it comes back because it's never yeah. really gone and so you ended up having four courses of antibiotics over a period of about four or five months, didn't yeah. you? The repeated infections led to lymphedema. Tim has mastered the art of self-management to keep himself largely infection-free. These stockings, I swear by them. So you wear your stockings every day? Don't leave home without them. Doesn't leave home without them. So he wears your stockings every day, and because of that, you can move more? Yeah, I can feel my feet more, a lot more. I, I was losing sensation in my one foot. Because it was so all swollen? The time, because it was so swollen all the time. So I was, and that was worrying me. You know, so, um, but these have definitely 100% done the trick so far. There are some men who are not keen on the compression to start with, uh, so it does help I actually wear it myself because I've got a little bit of lymphedema myself, so that helps to carry it across. But I think once they engage and see the difference, we're really seeing the benefit. By the end of each day, it used to go massive again. So these stockings that they supplied me with, this unit now, has really, really helped. So, you know, if you have got the stockings, wear them. If that infection goes on untreated, it can penetrate deeper tissue. And when it does that, it's got a risk of getting into your blood bloodstream. And then uh, a possible complication of that is sepsis. And then we're heading into the, the more severe problems that, and complications that can happen from cellulitis. If you ignore it, it might land you up in hospital, like Dorothy, who had an infection in her face. It looked as if everything had dropped and I was going to lose my eye. The cellulitis actually travelled down as far as there and they marked it off with a pen because they were watching it. If it had gone any further, dotty bye. <laughs> Professor Keith Harding sees a lot of people who are worried that they've got cellulitis. If the leg is red and the leg is swollen, it's easy to make the presumptive diagnosis of cellulitis. If there is spreading infection with cellulitis, you should see the, the redness uh, peaking to a point somewhere up the leg, but straight lines across the lower leg that match exactly where a dressing or a bandage or a stocking has been, it's much more likely to be irritation of the skin rather than infection. To understand more about why legs might look red, talk to your GP or therapist. Red legs is an actual condition with its own treatment and management plan. Working out why your legs are red is important. The key point to remember is, if you don't feel unwell and they are both red, 
it's unlikely to be cellulitis. We do not want delay in treatment, diagnosis and treatment. Equally, we don't want to misdiagnose or overdiagnose cellulitis uh, and add to the problem of antimicrobial resistance with inappropriate use of antibiotics. We know that patients with lymphedema have higher risk of uh, developing cellulitis and those who have had cellulitis have a higher risk of developing lymphedema. Sue's been in hospital on multiple occasions. Understanding more about self-management will hopefully help her stay healthy. I think you probably would benefit from a simple compression stocking. About the compression stockings, I'd never heard of that before. I didn't think that, didn't realise that that would help. Um, I suppose I knew about the moisturising really, but you get lazy. And I know about the exercise as well, it's just, I say it's laziness, it's not, it's pain. Sue's had at least 10 infections in her legs. We can see your skin is quite dry. Yeah. When you've got dry skin, this is where the bacteria can get in. Yeah. If you have cracks in your skin, then they just take that opportunity to get yeah, in through your exactly. skin, and they love the fluid that is in our tissues. Yeah. It's full of protein, it's lovely and rich, and they breed and feed on yeah. it, and that's when you get a cellulitis. Now, you yeah. said to me earlier, that lockdown had been a nightmare for you from an activity point of view, because yeah. it is, isn't it? We're it not is. going out, we're not moving yeah. so much. And that's something that you need to be aware is impacting these legs. Yeah. So if we're not moving, if we're not pumping, this fluid that is in your tissues can't move. Right, OK. Some people with recurrent infections will take a daily low dose of antibiotics as a preventative measure. It's work for Philip, who sees a lymphedema therapist regularly after treatment for bone cancer. I have had one reoccurrence of cellulitis where I was getting it regularly every six or seven weeks. Clinics like this across Wales are sharing best practice to try and prevent people being hospitalised, and for good reason. Stick with the advice you're given, take the medication, use the creams they recommend, and also the special wash thing when you have your wash or shower on your legs, and it all, it's all worthwhile. You may think it's a lot to do, but it is certainly worth doing, it certainly changed my life and it's given me some quality back in my life by taking that advice. Prevention is definitely better than cure. In summary, remember to look after your skin, stay active, watch your weight and if you have swelling, wear your compression garments. Well, I'm more knowledgeable about it now rather than just going into hospital and out. They've explained a lot to me about it and obviously I'm older and wiser, hopefully it won't happen again. Good self-care is essential and if you do have a flare-up, you need to act immediately. If you've got lymphedema, prevent yourself from ever getting cellulitis. If you're unfortunate like me and you get an episode of cellulitis, then work really hard to keep it under control and to prevent it from coming back and that means skin care. Skin care, skin care, skin care, moisturise, moisturise, moisturise. If you get this, trust me, wear the stockings, use the moisturiser. If you think you're getting it, contact your doctor and get it checked out.